Travelin' Hunter is fueled by Travelin' Hunter Illinois Base Camp, a low-volume, high-quality camp in the heart of America's best whitetail habitat. And also by Bloodsport Arrows. We're not afraid to show you blood. Closed captioning provided by Raptor Razor. Introducing the big game skinner from Raptor Razor. 74 million years of cutting experience can't be wrong. Visit RaptorRazor.com. All right, that about does it. We're packed, stacked, ready to rock and roll. And you know, have you ever went on a hunting trip and you feel like you've packed everything but the kitchen sink? That's the position I'm in today. And I literally have packed everything but the kitchen sink. I got shooting benches, I got bows, I got guns, I got a Keurig coffee maker, I got a crock pot, I got targets, I even got a shrub for my new camp. So I got everything underneath the sun except for my wife, my two boys, and my extra truck here at home. The reason for all this conglomerate, what a big word, conglomerate of junk that I have packed up is because we're going to my new Illinois base camp. It'll be my first time ever hunting at my own personal outfitting camp, so it's a pretty cool trip here. And then we're going to northern Michigan to hunt Beaver Island, which is a pretty unique island way north of Michigan. It's its own standalone island right on the Canadian border. So we're going to Illinois base camp, then we're going to Michigan. We're headed north. Traveling Hunter, brought to you by Mass XL, Mass Extra Large. This is an all natural product. It is 39%, yes, 39% protein. This deer right here. Well, we're rolling north out of Mount Sterling, Illinois, headed to the land of pure Michigan. Next stop on this trip is northern Michigan and Beaver Island. You're Tony Smotherman? I am. Tony has found himself in a lot of interesting places, but one place he never expected to find himself is 20,000 feet above a freshwater sea. After all, that's what Traveling Hunter is all about. Experiencing new places. And what could be more unique than hunting an island smack dab in the middle of the Midwest? Ah, I need some butter to rub on my hips to get me out. Tony wastes no time meeting the crew and heading out to set up his stand. Now the problem when you're in a hurry is you tend to forget some of the important details. I want to admit right now, I was not the smartest one because we're here trying to hang stands, there's snow on the ground, it's cold and who'd have thought it, and I had no gloves, so uh, these aluminum stands, yeah, they're cold right now. This old boy might be from Tennessee, but he isn't about to let cold hands hold him back from getting some good old-fashioned work done. With a little elbow grease and some southern grit, Tony gets his stand set. With the hard part done, Tony decides to scout the island to get his mind right. Because obviously we're not from here, never been here, don't know how this country even works as far as trying to figure out deer movement and where they bed and what their food sources is. We're gonna do a little scouting this afternoon and just trying to see if we can see any tracks or trails or movement in the last little bit because you see there's a little skiff of snow on the ground. So now time to put the eyes to the dirt. Tony spends that afternoon looking for deer sign. After about an hour, he meets up with his buddy Gavin who has something pretty cool to show Tony. Gavin has just given us a tour around the island. We come over here and this is a, an 800 acre inland lake. Well, it's a lake inside the island that's inside a big lake, which is kind of weird, but it's kind of cool too. And it's kind of a public area, so we walk down here and there's these guys got this big wall tent up, almost like you'd see out west somewhere another elk hunting. Got the fire going, they got two deer hanging on the skin rack right there. So obviously, somebody's had some luck today. By now, you know Tony has a serious love for his country. Not only that, but the history of his country as well. So it only makes sense that he has something historical up his sleeve for this afternoon. That, my friends, is a cool piece of history. Right now, today is our first day. It's the middle of the day. We're just kind of tooling around, checking in, taking in some sights. This is the number one lighthouse on the island. There's two here, but this is the number one. And it was commissioned to be built by the governor of Michigan in 1850. So. Uh, no doubt that sucker right there has got a whole lot of history and seen a whole lot of boats come around this country. Climb away, I've done it 500 times. So I can Dude, this up. is like a total spiral staircase. Yeah, this, my friends, is awesome. This is why you travel across the country to see cool stuff like this because in your backyard, there's five nine lighthouse just like this. Crazy cool, man. Too bad. Did somebody have to be up here watching? I don't know. They just lit it and left it. Well, so Unless 
That next morning, Tony would learn something about Michigan. It's real cold and sometimes it's real windy. With the weather not cooperating, Tony has to make a new plan for today. All right, I'm just saying for the record, 20 degrees and 25 mile an hour north winds right now. And when you're from the south, that's rough right there to sit out in that kind of weather. I kind of proud of myself though. I made it to about 10 o'clock. When we got up stand this morning, the lake behind us is a 20 acre lake. You can see white caps out there on that lake. The wind was blowing so hard. And we got down just a few minutes ago at 10 o'clock, frozen. I can tell you it's 20, but when I can show you a frozen 20 acre lake that froze in a matter of three hours, that's cold, my friends. Tony relied on his Bushnell trail cams at his base camp, and Beaver Island is no exception. Y'all remember when Tony grabbed a few before he left? Well, now he's putting them to use. It might be too windy to hunt, but at least he can get an idea of what the deer are doing. On his way back, Tony learned something else about Michigan that day. Now, what, we in a car with two cameras running. I'm talking out loud. Why are Aren't they, they scared? Why are they not putting and running off? Because <laughs> when I'm in the woods in camouflage, they, the first movement they put and run off. <laughs> Why are they not running off? Looks like Tony's going to have to use a car horn turkey call on his next hunt. Traveling Hunter is fueled by Mammoth Coolers, the best coolers since the Ice Age. Traveling Hunter is also brought to you by these quality sponsors. Rise and shine. It's time to hunt. Midwest hay bale blinds. Hunt in it, not behind it. Dang it. What? You gotta be kidding me. With this bad boy right... Okay. Mike, what's up with the phone? This is life or death. What? With the new Trophy Cam HD Wireless, the images are sent directly to your phone, tablet, or computer for up to the minute scouting info wherever you go. The woods no longer call, they text. Traveling Hunter is fueled by Hunt Force. Your trail cam photos tell a story. Hunt Force, find your game. And also by the swing blade with two blades in one to open game like a zipper by Outdoor Edge. Using flex tone game calls is one of the reasons pro staff hunters are able to continually call in the biggest and best game. My friends, I know when you head to the tree stand this fall, there's a whole lot to think about. There's a whole lot of tools that you got to put in your pack before you head to the timber. And there's two tools that you do not want to forget. Number one, is this Buck Commander Extreme Grunt Tube. This guy right here has everything you can throw at it. It is a whole toolbox in one small package. It's not gonna take up a whole lot of room in your backpack, which is a good thing. It has Grunt Tube, Fawn and Doe Bleach, and a Snort Weeze. And if you've never used a Snort Weeze, my friends, let me tell you, it will rubberneck a buck. If you got a buck walking off, you hit the Snort Weeze, it's gonna be hard for him not to turn around and come back and you get a shot at him. Second tool, a set of black racks. This, my friend, have you, oh, let me say, have you ever been to a water hole and somebody hollers fight? Even if you want to fight or not, you're going to go see what's going on. That's exactly what's going on right here. When you got this set of black rack, you slam these guys together and basically it's telling everybody there's a fight and no matter if the bucks want to fight or not, they're going to come in just because curiosity kills the cat. And with its patented bone care technology and full rack design, the black rat rattling system has the most realistic sounds possible when compared to sheds or rattling bags. So my friends, when you're headed to the timber this fall, you gotta think about space. Don't forget the Buck Commander Flexstone Grunt Call and the black rat. These guys right here will help you fill your tags. Now back to Traveling Hunter. Thanks to all the Bushnell trail cams he set up, Tony has an idea where to start scouting the deer. He ranged some does at 40 yards moving to the feeding area. I can only be at one place at one time. The best tool a man can have is a trail 
camera. Now that Tony knows where the deer activity is, he gets busy setting up a ground blind. Speaking of busy, that's not all Tony has planned for the day. While Tony makes his way back in town for lunch, his friends are putting something special together for the afternoon. All right, we just rolled out of McDonough's grocery store where I picked up my duck hunting license. So we're headed down here uh, to the Big Water. And we're going to go down and do a little duck hunting right here off the coast of this um, lighthouse down here. We're headed to the water, shotgun in hand. Too bad nobody <laughs> told these boys how much Tony can talk. FYI, this feels weird. <laughs> to the house, James, and through the park, please. And don't be acting like I'm heavy. Well, we need paddles. Of course, lucky for them, the one time you know Tony isn't making fun is when the hunting starts. Nothing gets this traveling hunter fired up like new experiences. Dude, that is crazy amount of birds. The boys see plenty of ducks, but none come close enough before T-Man has to get back to his stand. It's three o'clock. We had to call the old duck hunt off, but we want to be back on the farm down there by 3.30. Three o'clock now, that gives us 30 minutes to get back in the deer blind. That afternoon, Tony finally spots some bucks at 30 yards. He might have considered taking one of these deer home, if not for the fact that you can't shoot anything under a six-pointer on the island. Still, that doesn't stop traveling Tony from looking. The day turns into night, and for this old boy, it's been a long day. Good morning from beautiful Beaver Island. Best I can tell, it seems a little breezy outside, so I'm checking the weather here, well, kind of like I do every morning before I head out. And the good news is the temperatures climbed up from 19 degrees yesterday to 30 degrees this morning. But the problem is, when I'm looking this up, there's an exclamation point on this app here, and it says Gale beside it. Now, I don't know who Gale is. I thought it was some chick they was talking about until I clicked on it. And now that I've clicked on it, it says Gale Force Winds expected today up to and over 50 miles an hour gusts. Now, where I'm from, and probably where you're from, it's a good chance deer are not going to move in 50 mile an hour winds. But as bad as I hate to say it, we're going to head out, and it's a good chance we're going to have to find us a box blind to get into, because the ground blind I set up yesterday, hell, it might not be there this morning. That morning, the winds picked up to 50 plus miles an hour. As the day went on, the weather took a turn for the better. At about the same time, thanks to all his trail cameras, Tony has a revelation about this hunt. I have a sick suspicion that it's not going to happen in the next hour. After we left last night, the deer started moving and moved all night long until daylight hit this morning. That, my friends, is why we haven't been seeing a whole lot of deer. This is the exact reason why you run trail cameras for the sheer fact of now that I put that camera out, I know what's going on because I was really thinking, hmm, maybe there ain't a whole lot of deer up in this country. But after running my trail camera last night on the food plot, I realize there's a whole lot of deer up here. They're just moving in the dark. It looks like Tony won't get a chance to put his lead sled to work in northern Michigan. As bummed as he is, Tony has to get home in time for Thanksgiving. He says his goodbyes. All right, brother, we ready to rock and roll? Everything's good? Hey, thanks for coming. Thank you, Come sir. Back again in the spring and get a turkey. Hey, sir, I'll be back. And hops on a plane to the mainland. Of course, you know, Tony can't let go without getting the final word. Well, I've been rolling southbound and down out of Michigan for quite a while, and I've been making pretty decent time. Well, it is until I hit my hometown in Nashville, Tennessee, and hit all this wonderful afternoon traffic. And that's something I haven't seen in a while, because well, there is no traffic jams on Beaver Island. But I am going to make it home in time for Thanksgiving, which tomorrow I'll be giving thanks for my friends, my family, and all the cool things that's going on in my life. You know, and I'm even thankful for this trip to Beaver Island, even though that I'm coming back with a tag in my pocket. It still was a great trip. I got to meet new people. I got to hunt some new countries I've never seen before. 